you'd be forgiven for forgetting that the VW GLI still exists. But making more power with a standard six-speed manual transmission and limited slip for some $10,000 less than a similarly equipped Integra, this thing kind of blows that Acura out of the water. The Volkswagen GLI is the brand's long-running GTI sedan twin. Running the same E888 powertrain as you get in that GTI, this thing now just comes one way. You just pick your transmission and your color. Running 228 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque with a peak 21.6 pounds of boost, this thing puts a lot of power through its front wheels. As we're about to see, that can be for better and for worse. Before we hit the road though, just one key point here. This sedan, as it comes here, loaded with pretty much everything you could want from a comfortable modern sedan, comes from 35.5. Step across to the seven-speed DSG, as this one is equipped, and you add 1,400 bucks to the equation, and just a couple hundred more, depending on your paint option and things like that. Otherwise, this is really kind of hard to go wrong with. With those highlights out of the way, what is it like to actually drive? We spent a lot of time on the VW GTI and Golf R here on Driving.ca, but the GLI seems to slip under the radar. There's good reason for this. It is, by design, a rather low-key vehicle. Apart from the little red accents, the tiny spoiler at the rear, and the front valence, it's not really something that stands out as a shouty sporting sedan. Even the M-Line BMWs are shoutier about performance intentions than this thing. And to be sure, it's not as though this GLI is an outright destroyer of any segment. The enthusiast crown in this class is still worn by the Hyundai Elantra N. Just cruising around the city right now, I've got the dynamic damping set to its soft comfort setting. And as we've noted in the GTI and R, VW's system is really quite exceptional. Known as dynamic chassis control, it can stiffen up response quite a bit, or just dull it down for easy going deceleration. Drop it into eco mode, and it's a pretty friendly vehicle in that sense too. Though certainly not the thriftiest car on the market, it still registers pretty promising numbers. Anarchan reported figures are 9.1 liters per 100 kilometers city, 6.5 liters highway, and 7.9 combined. These are numbers that do hold up as well. Driving around comfortably, I was registering as low as 6.3 indicated on the highway. And even when I've been getting enthusiastic, it still hasn't gotten beyond 10 and a half. Now, as pleasant as this car is to spend time in, it still isn't perfect. Post-Dieselgate VW has definitely had to dial back some of the flourishes, and a lot of the hard plastics in here just kind of meh. You don't get the nice, soft touch finishes that you did back in the Piek era. Certain buttons and switches have sort of a clickety, brittle feeling and sound to them. The sunroof control, for instance, feels like it's gonna snap sometimes when I press it to close. Also a little frustrating is that while this doesn't have the infamous new infotainment system in the center here, it does have those slick capacitive buttons here on the wheel, which you can knock with a finger and invoke controls that maybe you don't necessarily want to in that moment. When using those controls though, it does things well. Adaptive Cruise stands out in this car as a very effective system, even in stop and go traffic. It really eases up on the driver fatigue when you're commuting on the highway and just in general running about. The perforated leather buckets up front here are not as aggressive as you're gonna get in the GTR and should be friendlier for a wider variety of body shapes. That being said, they also aren't quite as supportive when you're really rolling into the heavy stuff. In that heavy stuff, you've got a few options. Knock it into sport mode and you get tightened response from the damping as well as slightly heavier feedback from the electric power steering. While it's not exactly a feelsome rack, it is certainly preferable to what you get in the Civic Si and Integra where the artificial weighting is just loathsome. Set it up in custom and you can have a really nice light comfort setting on your steering. You can dial down that fake engine noise, which is really appreciated, but still the quick snappy throttle map. Of that map, it is worth noting that sport mode is actually sporty in here. There is a significant difference in throttle response between comfort, eco, and sport. Though it may not sound like a lot, those 258 pound-feet of torque are a fair bit for those front wheels to manage, and the GLI will eagerly spin tires even in warm, dry conditions if you roll into it too fast. Starting from frequent stops in the city, sport mode is honestly not advised. Now, the other factor to consider in how sporty you want to get is your selection of transmission. This car is upgraded with the $1,400 direct shift gearbox. It's a fine trans that we've talked about a lot in different vehicles. Shifts can be a little jerky at low speeds under some conditions, but by and large, it's a quick and inoffensive setup. That said, it's not exactly the most exciting. First off, just because it's an automatic and 
come on, you're buying a GLI. Second off, the way you interface with it leaves a little to be desired. Those crispy, cheap plastics, yeah, those apply to the paddles too. There isn't even an attempt at a faux metallic surface. They're just there. Ugh, I don't like them. If you pick one of these up with the manual at that attractive 35.5 price point, you are looking at a significantly more engaging driving experience. The six-speed is an easy one to use, and while not the sharpest in the segment, especially compared to those Honda products, it is a pleasant one to use, and I would recommend it. Now, when that power leaves the transmission, it goes to the front wheels through an electronically controlled limited slip diff. This is important because without that LSD, you'd be looking at a lot of brake managed traction control. Seeing the amount that these wheels want to skip about off the line, you'd be sapping a lot of power and introducing mechanical wear, which is not ideal. That sort of brake vectored traction is still a factor in this vehicle, but the LSD brings a valued reduction in that. Taken on the whole then, I've got to say, I've been a lot more impressed with this generation's GLI than I have the past. If you're not someone who's looking for that sporting potential, this is simply a nice way of getting around just in everyday regular traffic. If you want more comfort, the leather equipped Integra is probably a slightly nicer overall package. But by and large, I've got to say this thing ticks a lot of the boxes and for such an attractive price point. Serious kudos to VW's product planning here because while perhaps not the strongest car, it is one of the more compelling value propositions I've come across in a good little while. For driving.ca, I'm Al Alder. For more car news, reviews, previews, and specs, be sure to check us out online on driving.ca and follow our socials over on Instagram and Twitter.